Some marvellous performances, incredible stuff. Uh, Madonna was the last performer to knock them all dead here, and she's now just about to talk to Joe Wiley in our rock garden downstairs. So I'll hand you over to Joe with Madonna. Even before I've had a drink of water, okay? I know, which is really harsh. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we had a problem with our sound, so I'll just oh. ask you all over again yeah, how you yeah. are. How was it for you? Um, I was so hyped up with adrenaline, I don't remember it actually happened. Yeah. That's what everyone keeps saying. It's like yeah. an out-of-body experience. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's surreal to see so many people in front of you. Yeah. Is that the biggest audience you've ever played to? Biggest audience I've ever played to and the closest to home I've ever played. I'm pretty sure my kids could hear me singing because we oh, live right down the street from the park. Your kids aren't here? No, no. Too crazy for the kids. Yeah, when you're yeah. working, you don't want them here. Yeah. 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 So why did you decide to do this? Did you get a call from Bob? Um, I got a letter from Bob. A letter? Yeah, because um, Bob doesn't have my phone number. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a really smart No, one. I got a letter from Bob. Uh, it was passed to me through a mutual friend, and I read it, and I was like, oh, that's the week I'm doing, mixing my record, and then I have to go on a holiday with my children, and oh, 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 and then I thought twice about what it's all, of, what, what it's all about, and I mean, you know, it's, it's a much bigger um, issue than my own personal problem, so... Um, so did I did it. Did you do it. any research into it? I mean, did you... Well, I did ask Bob. I mean, listen, I didn't say yes right away, to be truthful. I just said, exactly what is it you're doing? Are you fundraising? No. Well, what are you doing? We're consciousness raising, but consciousness raising for what? And then he, you know, did elaborate on um, about the G8 and what was going to be happening in, in three days from now in Scotland. And that's when it all um, made sense to me. So, and have you ever been to Africa yourself? Have you ever? Uh, no, I've never been. Is it something you'd be interested in doing? Can you imagine uh, that you'd be able to do it? Because I mean, Bono goes and does it with nobody knowing anything about it. Chris Martin. Yeah. I know it's difficult for you. In no, no. I mean, I, I, it's not. I don't want to not do it because it's difficult. I mean, I, um, I would do it if the time was right, and I could really go there and affect real change, not something momentary. But just to like, just to see what's going on in Africa and to yeah. yourself, yeah. No, well, I mean, I, I do, I, I do have friends that go there, and I do know, I do know to a certain extent what's going on there, um, from Bill Clinton and Christian Amanapur, who are both friends of mine. But um, obviously, nothing is like actually being there and witnessing it with those people. Yeah, there. exactly. Okay. Yeah. So maybe sometime. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And do you think it's actually been successful today? Do you think it's actually uh, it's well been successful in raising awareness? Absolutely successful in, in terms of raising awareness, but I think more than anything, the pressure that it's going to put on the world leaders who are meeting in three days to decide whether to remove debts and increase funding and change trade laws, etc., etc., that's the most important thing, and hopefully we, we will have achieved that. I mean, and as far as I know, changes have already been, been made. Okay. So. Uh, Live Aid, originally, you were there, you weren't part of the original crew yes. that were there. How Wearing this a horrible there? outfit. What, what are your memories of it? <laughs> Um, once again, incredibly surreal. Um, it was one of the, you know, first shows I ever did live, and to have that many people in front of me was a bit strange. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, strange. So terrifying. Uh, terrifying. Yeah, I wasn't as scared this time. Just kind of bold. But it had quite a big effect on your career, didn't it? I'm not saying that I don't know, you should necessarily profit it. Sorry. Yeah, did of course it? you did, because people saw you. And I don't. I don't remember. Impact. That was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a fair time ago. Yeah. Very much time ago. So you didn't have to do this because you are doing other stuff at the moment. What are you doing? You're mixing the album, or I'm recording a record. I'm editing a documentary. And What's the documentary? It's a documentary I made of my tour. Ah. So like Truth or Dare Part 2 kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And writing more books, are there more books to come? Yeah, writing more books, all kinds of things. Still children's stories, you still? Yeah, work. yeah. But what I'm most looking forward to is spending some time with my children. Who you do get a holiday, school. do you? Yeah. Coming up next two weeks, I'm so happy. Oh, but you can't wait. Yeah. Do you miss, I, I guess you've been working non-stop and Yeah, them I do, and I miss them a lot, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's it like in the backstage area? Because I, I went out there briefly and it was the most surreal thing because... Well, I got to meet, meet my f most favourite, favourite, favourite comedian in the whole world, Ricky Gervais. That was the highlight <laughs> of my day, I've got to say. Okay. I worship him and I told him I would sweep his floor for him if he would employ me in such a fashion. And he agreed <laughs> to it, so that's cool. And what, yeah, what was his response? He said, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Good, and that's why we all love Ricky. Thank you very much, Steve, for talking to us, and well done. My pleasure. Yeah, that was stunning, really stunning. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.